what extraordinary thing has God designed with just ordinary you? Amen? That's the idea this morning. God wants you to understand. God wants to do something this morning. He wants it to be a transition in your life. He wants to take you from ordinary to extraordinary. Amen? That's what God wants to do this morning. God wants you to understand that you are extraordinary people. Has anyone ever told you that, that you're extraordinary? No? Miss Mary Ellen, you are extraordinary. Everyone tell Miss Mary Ellen she's extraordinary. Extraordinary. Amen? Amen? Just tell that person next to you, just tell them they're, maybe they're in front of you, just turn around and look, just tell them they're, tell them they're extraordinary. I mean, otherwise God messed up, amen? If you can't do that, then apparently he's not God and he's not sovereign and he, I don't know, he messed up along the way. But God does not mess up. We are extraordinary people, and God wants you to get that this morning in your spirit. He wants you to understand it. You're not just some ordinary Joe Schmo, whoever. Thank goodness Joe's not here today because he would have misunderstood that. No, you don't understand what I'm saying. You're not just some, you know, I know you think of yourself as a speck of sand on this, on this eight billion pieces of seashore that we live on, lots of people. You know what I'm saying? But you are extraordinary. You are unique. God wants to take you this morning from ordinary to extraordinary. If you have your Bible, I want you to find Deuteronomy chapter 7. Earlier this week, I believe it was on, I don't know, over the weekend or Monday, there's a passage, I believe, Deuteronomy 14 and 2, and it's almost word for word exactly like Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse number 6. But I must have read through that Several weeks ago, or I don't know, a couple weeks ago, when we got into Deuteronomy, the one-year Bible, I must have read through that and skipped over it, but boy, it really grabbed my attention earlier this week, and it reminded me of something. I've been thinking about it all week long, and then God took me back and said, I already told you once, I'm just, I'm just confirming what I already said, that my people, you, as an individual, are extraordinary. You need to get that in your spirit this morning, that you are extraordinary. Amen? Say that. Say, I'm extraordinary. All right. You, are you serious? You really believe that? Do you, Peter? Do you believe that? He said, what's this mean? You're supposed to say yes. You are extraordinary. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse number 1, beginning of verse number 1. I want to read it all to you because I felt like verses 1 through 5 were equally as important and leading up to this idea that we see in verse number 6. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel. That's where we find this passage. He's giving his farewell speech, and he's reminding them of all the great things that God has done and all the th great things that God is doing and all the great things that God will do. And it's a transition. Imagine that. It's a transition period because he's getting ready to leave, and Joshua's getting ready to step in and take over and run the show. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse number 1, When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are entering, it's Moses talking to the people, but it's also God talking to you. So you need to understand this. Hopefully we'll break it down and you'll get this in just a minute. When the Lord your God brings you into the land that you are entering to possess, and he drives out before you the many nations, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations larger and stronger than you. And when the Lord your God, verse number two, has delivered them over to you, and you have defeated them, then you have to destroy them completely. Totally, you've got to get rid of them. And you say, what in the world does that mean to me? It means this. It means this, that you are no longer who you used to be. Amen? That you are a new creation in Christ. That the old person you used to be is gone. And behold, something brand new in Christ now is here on the scene. That God has brought you from darkness to light. That he's brought you to life. That who you are now is not who you used to be yesterday, last week, or ten years ago. But God has done a great work in you. And he's brought you into a new land, a new promise. And you've got, you've got access to everything. And you can put your hand in his hand. And you've got purpose. And you can walk with a smile on your face. And you can have joy unspeakable that's full of his glory. Hallelujah. God says you need to understand where I brought you from. And you need to realize this. Those things that I took out of your life. Those things that I, that I delivered you from. Those things, those hindrances and all that junk that I, that I forgave you of. You cannot go back to that stuff. Those seven nations for the Israelites, those things that you dealt with were bigger and stronger than you. And they had you captivated and they had you locked up and you were a slave and they were the master. And that's all there is to it and I don't care what you think. It had a hold on you and Christ was the only one that, that set you free. That was it. He wants you to understand that you can't go back to that stuff. That he, look, that is over. The old Jew is gone. And the old Jew is never supposed to come back on the scene again. Amen? That person died a long time ago. You get it? 
He said, you got to destroy that completely. You better quit thinking about it. Quit, 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 quit talking about it. Quit, quit letting people remind you of who you used to be about it. It's over. Destroy that completely. That's, that's the middle part of verse number two. Make no treaty with them. Oh, my goodness. Quit talking to the devil. Quit entertaining sin. Quit, quit allowing yourself to be in the same place that sin is. Look, you don't make treaties with the enemy. We are not snake charmers. We are snake killers. You understand? Quit flirting with the enemy. Quit flirting with who you used to be. You don't make a treaty with this. They get defeated. They're, this thing has got to die. You've got to understand the spiritual significance here. You are not who you used to be. And quit talking to me or the devil about it. There is no treaty here. There is no agreement here. That's dead, and now you are alive. Amen? You still with me? Make no treaty with them. Show them no mercy. Do not intermarry with them. Wow. I mean, come on. You, do you understand what God's saying here? Do not give your sons or your daughters uh, uh, or sons to take their daughters for your sons, for they, will, for, for they will turn your children away from following me to serve other gods. It's not just for you. It's for your home. It's for your kids. It's for everything you've got. You don't give the enemy anything. You give an inch, he takes a, a foot or a mile. I don't know. Is it a foot? Mile? Does it matter? I don't know. He's going to take it. If you put it out there, he'll take it. It could be a foot. It could be a mile. Amen? That's all right. My wife is absolutely right. Amen? Amen? Okay, thanks. Come on, you guys. You've got to help me out here. It wasn't in my notes. It was just in my head. Amen? Look, whatever God's given, you say, well, is it just me? No, it's everything you got. It's your sons. It's your daughters. It's your home. It's your job. It's your car. It's your clothes. You don't give anything up. If God's given it to you, that's yours, baby. You keep it. You hold on to it, and you don't give the enemy anything. Amen? Don't crack the door open. Don't let him in in any way, shape, or form. That is what it used to be. And what used to be is not supposed to be. You are new, brand new in Christ. Amen? For they will turn your children away from following to serve other gods. The Lord's anger will burn against you and will quickly destroy you. God says you either destroy the stuff that's destroying you or that, that stuff will destroy you. You get it? You either put that to death or that's going to be the cause of your death. That's what I'm saying. That's what God's saying. It could, it, look, you say, well, you know, I, you know, it's okay if I pick it up and if I touch it. And it's okay. It's o you know what? It's going to kill you because you handle a snake long enough, it will bite you. Amen? Are you still with me? This is what you are to do to them. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, cut down their sheriff poles, and burn their idols in the fire. Boy, God's pretty deliberate, and he's quite specific about who you used to be. He's brought you into a new land. He has saved you and changed you. Grace and mercy brand new every day. Could he be more explicit this morning? He's a good God. He's saying, don't pick that up. Quit messing with that stuff. Verse number six, because you are a people that is holy to the Lord your God. Wow. Did you know that? You're holy this morning. Did you realize that? I know you thought God was holy. We talked about this a few weeks ago. We touched on it on a Wednesday night. God brought that back to my remembrance. You are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you. He picked you out of all the people on the face of the earth to be his people. You are his treasured possession. Amen? You're holy. God, God wants you to know this morning that you are holy. I know, that's a big concept to wrap your mind around because some of you don't even understand what holy is. And some of you who think you understand what holy is really don't even know what holy is. And, and most of us, we're just so afraid of the word, we don't even like to use it. And the only time we say it is when we're referring to God. But God wants you to know that you are holy. You are holy. You're not only holy, but you're holy because he chose you. He's chosen you because you are his treasured possession. You mean the world to him. Amen? You ready to pray? You sure? All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you again and again and again and again and again. God, we don't pray enough, so we'll just keep praying, praying, praying. Because you said if we keep pressing, if we keep pushing, if we keep asking, if we keep seeking, and if we keep knocking, that we'll get answers, we'll find stuff, and doors will be opened. If we're persistent in our prayer, then you will be persistent in giving us answers. And so, God, we pray right now. We speak over this service, over the remainder of the time that we have, that, God, you would speak. 
and that you would not only speak, that your voice would be heard, that we would not only hear, but we would be doers of your word, that you would bring about change this morning through your word, through your anointing, through me and the people that are before you, that God would cause us to leave this place like a mighty army, realizing that we are extraordinary. We are not some ordinary group of folks, but we are blessed beyond measure. And we've got something on the inside of us that can absolutely change this planet. God, change our minds this morning and help us to realize who we truly are in Christ Jesus. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. All the honor belongs to you. It's in your name, Jesus. And the church said, Amen.